On this day in history in 2013, it was a Friday, June 28th, and 32 people were reportedly killed in some communities in Plateau State, and that's because um, alleged Fulani herdsmen had invaded communities in Plateau State and killed over 30 people, burnt over 100 houses, and they say that's in retaliation for about a thousand of their cattle that had been stolen. It was a bloody day in Plateau State on this day in history. And this basically was uh, an attack on farmers of the Taruk tribe. These are Taruk farmers who were killed in um, alleged reprisal attacks for cattle theft. You know, there's, there's really, really not much to the story to say without, you know, just taking our minds back and then casting a forward to the present, seeing just the similarities between then and now, what, much, what, what, what has changed, you know, between 2013 and now when we're still having killings, when, you know, herders are saying their cattle were stolen and then they're basically taking it all out on farmers in, in, in those states. And this attack has invaded um, communities, including Bolang, Karakashi, and, you know, they had rode to the communities in motorcycles, you know, trying to go after uh, people who they say had stolen their cattle. So it's just, you know, conflict over you know, between farmers and herders over an alleged theft of cattle. That's, that really is a story, and we're still seeing that today. Mm. The issue then, still talking about grazing roots, you know, the farmers alleging that, you know, the herders had been taking their cattle for, you know, for, for grazing and pastures through their farms. Maybe they stole those cattle. We really do not have that, the fact of that story in that regard, but really that's what happened, mm. that reprisal attack and the hundreds of houses that were burnt on this day in history. As, uh, I've seen people say Nigeria is a huge crime scene you know, mm. because you're talking about 2013 now, you know, and you know, and now we're talking about this. We still don't know that anybody was arrested for the murder of those uh, 32 people. Well, the story the... says that um, security operatives were deployed and they killed over 20 people. Yeah. That security forces were deployed, killed about 20 men. Same thing. We saying. don't even know if those 20 men are farmers, are headers. No profiling of those people. Same thing we're saying. You know, um, we still don't know if anybody has been arrested or charged to court or you know justice has been served for those 32 lives that were lost and that day, the property that was destroyed. Um, all the cows that were uh, reportedly stolen, um, you know, and it's not the first time this, you know, is maybe one out of, you know, 500 different, um, you know, incidents where people were killed in villages and communities and settlements uh, by bandits, by herders, by, you know, terrorists, whoever they are. Um, and, you, you know, you don't have any reports that anybody has been arrested. You don't have any report that, oh, you know, a bandit leader has been sentenced to, to 100 years in jail or whatever it is. Um, and so you, know, you almost cannot expect that some of these things will stop. Um, we, 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 so much, you know, so much injustice, so much, you know, has taken place in the, in the last couple of years that should never happen, not to any society, not to any, any country um, that wants to move forward. Um, how, do you, how do you tell any of these families that you know the people who committed those murders maybe you know would never be um, be jailed or maybe would never you know be, um, be get the justice that they deserve. It's painful. It's it's generally it's honestly painful, and it's it's in different directions, including the the high handedness of our security agencies, um, including extrajudicial killings. There's so 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 much um, of you know lives that have just been lost recklessly. Um, because there's no control over, cattle. over them. Yeah, over cattle. Because there's there's no actual grip on the country. There's no there's no control. There's no hold on anything going on in the country. So it's sad. Anyway, let's move over to uh, Honduras in 2009, and this was uh, what was described as the start of the Honduran constitutional crisis. It was on this day that a coup took place against the Honduran president. He, you know, a couple of uh, days or weeks earlier had tried to uh, set up a constitutional amendment um, and, of course, set up a referendum with regards to amending the Honduran constitution. And that was um, the reason for the coup. He was ousted by a local military coup uh, following a 
failed request to hold a referendum to rewrite the Honduran Constitution. Um, it was, um, of course, a huge dispute um, over the changes that the Constitution uh, needed, according to the President at that time. Um, Manuel Zelaya was his name, planned to hold a poll on a referendum to uh, a Constituent Assembly to change the Constitution. The Honduran Supreme Court upheld a lower court injunction against the 28th of June poll um, that was originally uh, mentioned. However, the constitutional process for dealing with the situation was unclear as there were no clear procedures for removing or prosecuting a sitting uh, president. And that, that really was, you know, the reason behind the need to amend the constitution. On the morning of June 28th in 2009, approximately 100 soldiers stormed the president's residence and put him on a plane to San Jose, Costa Rica. He immediately called this a coup upon his arrival um, in uh, Costa Rica. Later that day, of course, there was a letter uh, from his office uh, saying uh, that he had purportedly resigned. But of course, he also said that that letter was forged. These events garnered widespread co uh, condemnation as a coup d'etat. And of course, two thirds of Honduras citizens, um, of course, at that time, uh, lived below the poverty line. So it was a complete mess. Uh, for Manuel Zen, Zen, uh, Zelaya, um, as it was popularly called. Yes, um, it was. It was. And um, there's always the, you know, U.S. angle about how Pentagon officials were involved in this whole situation. And even though we know Barack Obama then were, you know, was calling for calm regarding the school. You know, just thinking about the story, how that particular morning, Zelaya had been woken up from his bed, dragged out in his pajamas. His security guards were beaten. They arrested him and basically flew him out. It, it really was, I mean, talking about this particular coup just reminds me of the situation in Mali, how yeah. the president was arrested and all the coups and everything going on in the country. But yes, that's what happened today in history, 2009. Absolutely. Stay with us. We'll move into our first major conversation for today. Uh, we're, of course, going to be starting in Anambra State, where there have been controversies concerning the uh, governorship election uh, primaries for different parties from APGA to the PDP to the APC. And we'll be having that conversation um, right next after this short break. Stay with us. <laughs> 